saddened by the tragic event that has just occurred in our city. And we extend our deepest sympathies to Dr. King's family. Every conceivable effort is being made to apprehend his assassin. Meanwhile, we call upon all citizens of our community, as Dr. King would have wished, to maintain peace and order. To maintain peace, the mayor ordered a curfew. Memphis was cordoned off by the police and National Guard. An emergency situation does exist, and at this time, we're asking that all people in Memphis... The white community in Memphis feared King's death would spark a violent backlash. ID checks were started on anybody coming or going to a black neighborhood. A lone bouquet hung on the door of room 306 at the Lorraine Motel. America was really in shock. Everybody asked who could have killed Martin Luther King. The FBI very quickly offered an answer. A lone killer, probably crazy, undoubtedly racist, was on the second floor of the boarding house on Main Street. He waited by the window until Reverend King came out of his room. But Detective Reddit, like many others, was not satisfied with the official FBI story. He started asking questions. If you look at a picture and you discover who was kneeling side, side, down beside him, there was a young man kneeling beside him. Do you know his name? Uh, his last name is McCullough. Um, today, I think he's with the CIA. That's my, what I found out. That's impossible to verify. The CIA will not release the names of its employees, but that young man did seem to be ducking when King was shot. Could he have been an informer? What happened to the police radio in Memphis? Just moments after King was killed, the radio stopped transmitting. What happened to the transmission? Who called? Why did it go out? It's never gone out before. What else? Uh, why is that uh, everybody uh, was pointing at the bank and not at the window? Everybody was pointing at the bank. And at the bank, there was a whole line of trees, OK? Uh, in two days, all those trees had disappeared. It was very vegetated. There was a lot of vegetation in a matter of days. How many days? I'm not sure. They cut uh, the city park commission, city of Memphis Park Commission. Maybe King's killer was hiding in the bushes and not standing in a window across the street, as the FBI said. Could a second gunman have been waiting in the shrubs, just in case? Wayne Chaston arrived at the murder scene just after the assassination. He questioned Reverend King's chauffeur less than half an hour after King's death. Mr. Jones told us that what he saw when a shot was fired, he looked over and he saw a uh, man in a white sheet in the bushes and he ducked down. He then said that uh, a few minutes later, a few seconds later, the man came out of the bushes, no sheet. He thought he saw him throw something and he said he thought it, the same man that joined the group of people coming out of the fire station and who were jumping off the wall. He also said that the man that he thought he saw come out of the bushes, jumped off the wall, and came on the premises of the Lorraine Motel. And he said he was scared because he was convinced that, that was the man who fired the shot. A killer hiding behind a white sheet? That sounds improbable. Yet look closely at this news film taken the day after King's death. A sheet hanging out to dry might have gone unnoticed, but that's just a guess. According to the testimony of a policeman named Gorman, a Remington rifle with James Earl Ray's fingerprints was found near the boarding house less than two minutes after King's assassination. Wayne Chaston believes that contradicts the theory that King's killer was in a bathroom in the boarding house. Mr. Gorman's testimony, although they did not call him at Ray's trial, they took his deposition and he was on record as saying that it couldn't have been it couldn't have been more than two minutes, more likely less than two minutes by the time that he, the shot was fired, by the time he walked in front of the main street, the, the rooming house, that he found a bundle, he called the dispatcher, the dispatcher told him to stand there and protect it. He said it looked like there's a rifle in there.
There was no way that a shot could have been fired from rooming house and for the gunman to run back, which is the conventional wisdom that, that supposedly James Earl Ray ran from the rooming house, went into his room, had a big funnel, wrapped up various things, jacket, even beer in a can, wrapped in a sheet, walked and ran down the steps and then dropped it right there and then got into the Mustang and rode off. The rifle was found in a bundle. Would King's killer rushing to escape have taken the time to pack the murder weapon only to leave it a few yards from the scene? Could somebody have planted that gun with Ray's fingerprints in front of the boarding house? No ballistic test was ever run on that rifle. The FBI insists the bullet was too damaged. Ballistic experts say that's very unlikely. But let's assume that James Earl Ray shot the bullet. Could he have done it? Could he have hit somebody in the head from across the street? Was he that good a shot? 